And now, the best 60-ish seconds of your week. This week, the news was dominated by stories about these crazy mailings of bomb parts and purportedly bombs to various uh, prominent Democrats and Democrats supporting celebrities around the country. We just don't know enough yet to appropriately comment, but this much I'm pretty sure of. The FBI and the various investigative bodies will get to the bottom of this. There's always forensic evidence, whether it's DNA or some other sort, uh, whether it's uh, video uh, when folks weren't watching or some other sort of evidence that's gonna come out when there's something this pervasive and this broad. They'll catch the perpetrator at some point. And I'm told that as we're taping this, there's either an arrest being made or arrests about to be made in the case. That's pretty fast, but you knew that eventually they get to the bottom of this. It happened apparently sooner than later. And we'll know a lot more very, very shortly. So next week we'll talk about it. But what the bombing stories have had the effect of doing is to push off the front page the Saudi Arabian culpability in the gruesome and awful murder of Jamar Khashoggi. And it has also pushed off the front page the visual images of this caravan, which is trekking its way through Central America, inching its way each day towards our southern border. Those powerful images ignore politically to the benefit of border security advocates, most of them Republicans. And that would have an impact in the midterm elections. I don't think there's much question about that. So whether that story gets pushed back into the limelight remains to be seen. But we're now just about 10 days away from these historic midterm elections. And as we all know, historically, the Democrats are going to have a significant advantage because the party that controls the White House typically does not do well in the midterm elections. Additionally, the Democrats have enjoyed an enthusiasm or intensity gap for most of the campaign. That's now shifting. The Republicans have either overtaken or are about to overtake the Democrats' enthusiasm lead and intensity lead. So the 23 seats that are going to determine, the 23 seats that the Democrats have to flip in order to control the House of Representatives are going to be the subject of our conversation next week. The races for the U.S. Senate are made very interesting by the unique way in which senators are elected and the anomaly of Democrats having to defend 26 seats this year while Republicans only have to defend nine. And of those 26 seats, 10 are in states carried by Donald Trump two years ago, half of them by very large margins. Republicans, on the other hand, only have to defend a single seat in a state carried by Hillary Clinton, that being Nevada, where Senator Heller now appears to be at least in pretty good shape and moving forward, whereas he had been in trouble early on. The good news for the Democrats is that the so-called blue wall, that strip across the Northeast Rust Belt that they had counted on to protect Hillary Clinton two year, years ago, appears to be holding up. And while it collapsed like a bad souffle for her, it looks like my home state of Pennsylvania, neighboring Ohio, Michigan, and Wisconsin are, at least at this point, pretty safe for the Democrats. But when you look at the other states carried by Trump, there is real opportunity for Republicans to pick up seats and enhance their relatively slim majority in the Senate. Look at Florida, for example, a state carried by a very slim margin by President Trump, and it's going to be a very slim margin on election night there with a record amount of spending between the incumbent Bill Nelson and the incumbent Republican Governor Rick Scott, who's running against him there. That's a toss up. There are three states that Donald Trump carried with 56% of the vote. Interestingly, most of the states he carried didn't get to 50%. Those are Missouri, where Claire McCaskill looked early on to be in pretty good shape, but Josh Hawley, the Republican Attorney General there, now looks to have eclipsed her lead. And in Indiana, where Donnelly appears to be still hanging on, and Montana, where a popular Democrat senator there, John Tester, is running into this full-forced wind of the Trump phenomenon, where he remains very popular. In my judgment, one of those states is going to get back to its kind of DNA red state instincts on election night and produce a victory for, for a Republican. I'm pretty sure about North Dakota, where Heidi Heidkamp, in my judgment, will go down to defeat on election night, ending her career, a state where Donald Trump carried 63% of the vote. The one that's incredibly interesting, will be fun to watch, is West Virginia, where President Trump got nearly 70% of the vote in 2016. But Joe Manchin, the Democrat senator there, remains very popular despite the fact that the president's popularity is at an all-time high there. Manchin voted for Kavanaugh. He's voted with the president on a lot of different issues, but 
despite all that, his lead has essentially evaporated. That's now a toss up and he actually could get overtaken. Democrats think they've got an opportunity in Nevada, which we already talked about, in Arizona, where two women are running against each other. Interestingly, two Iron Man finishers. That's a unique uh, situation. Uh, that will be interesting to watch and is a true toss up. They also thought they could take states like Tennessee and you know, an open seat there and even defeat Ted Cruz in Texas. That isn't going to happen. The Republicans have an opportunity to pick up seats in the Senate. How many they take remains to be seen. But for now, that is the best 60-ish seconds of your week.